I want to go across now, live and exclusive to Chennai. Joining us from there is the Minister of State uh, with independent charge for science and technology, Minister of State in the Prime Minister's office, in charge also of atomic energy and space research. Dr. Ajitinder Singh was with the team at ISRO at the launch center. He's just come back from Chennai and I must tell our viewers this. I just discovered that uh, Dr. Ajitinder Singh speaks Chase Tamil. I didn't know that. He's a man from Jammu and Kashmir. For him to speak Tamil, the way that I just discovered he does, is quite incredible. You're a man of many talents. Dr. Jitinder Singh, welcome. You were at the Sri Harikota Center when the launch was taking place at the Javan Space Center. Explain the sentiment, the emotions that you witnessed when this launch happened, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Rahul, for the, uh, at the outset for having uh, got me over here. Uh, as you said, I'm just... Uh, back from Sri Kota. As, as you would have witnessed, there is a huge lot of enthusiasm across the country and even at Sri Kota. I think for the first time, uh, the Steesh Dhawan Space Center was a witness to such a huge crowd of people from all sections of society, they were students, they were youth, uh, they were academicians, scientific fraternity of course, both the super innovative, the working ones and most of all the media persons. We had as, at least as many as about 1000 media persons and uh, I think uh, this is uh, a territory which was uh, in a way forbidden for uh, media. So I think that was the first time the gates of uh, the Dhawan Space Center were thrown open for uh, such a huge media presence. Uh, I, I remember the times when even a launching would get covered in the days of print media after two days. And that too if a failure had happened. If it had gone smooth, it wouldn't even invite media attention. But now, that, I think that is now the change. The ecosystem which has been... Uh, developed in the last three, four years after Prime Minister Modi took a very, very, very path-breaking decision, going, breaking the taboos of the past to, to, to allow private participation and to allow other stakeholders to partner with ISRO. So even in today's mission, for example, we had the participation of the industry. So there you could see the academia, you could see the industry, you could see startups, uh, you could uh, see the media, and I think that media, in fact, has also become a part of the the entire. Uh, exercise uh, behind the mission. So that kind of enthusiasm cutting across the sections of societies shows the involvement of the people as, as, as a whole, the nation as a whole and also they were owning it up as something which was a matter of great pride to them and possibly also uh, feeling a sense of uh, supremacy being gained by India uh, which was till a few years ago uh, looked up or looked at as a, as a country which had nothing much to do with these new progressive areas uh, like uh, space technology or even climate change. There's a lot energy. of emotion so attached to Chandrayaan-3, especially on the back of what happened unfortunately with Chandrayaan-2. You were speaking to all the scientists at ISRO. How confident are they that enough changes have been made in the manner in which this shuttle will operate to ensure the soft landing on the 23rd, 24th of August completes the unfinished, unfinished mission of Chandrayaan 2? Yes, uh, uh, I'm glad you asked that, Rahul. Uh, I was just to add to what I was saying right now. Uh, the enthusiasm was so infectious that even the commoners were going to offer prayers before entering into that uh, gallery. So that was the... Anyway, having said that, now as far as Chandrayaan 3 is concerned, vis-a-vis -vis Chandrayaan 2, I would not precisely as a mem as, a, as someone from the scientific fraternity uh, describe Chandrayaan 2 as a failure in the sense that uh, 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 there's hardly been any country in the world which has had a successful landing in the very first attempt. Most of them have had a second attempt or even third attempt. So from that point of view, India's statistical record is much better. And having said that, the Chandrayaan 2, the rover is there, it has been sending us some findings, we have gathered infer inputs and inferences from that. Uh, the only thing is that the agenda which we had and we saw it, it could not be accomplished in totality. So, yes, but at the same time, as you rightly mentioned, learning from uh, certain uh, modifications had been made. Even after a successful mission, we try to go to the next level. 
learning from the experience of the earlier mission. Uh, uh, sometimes, you know, it occurs to the mind that, look here, this could have been done this way, it didn't happen that way. Like, you know, you produce a, you direct a movie after having directed the earlier one. So, that part, now here we have uh, not only made up for uh, the, the buffer effect, buffer, uh, we have created a buffer cushion uh, against uh, what had happened last time, but also that we don't have uh, we just have a propulsion module and a, and a, and a, and a lander module. So that uh, component is now not going to be there. So that is also going to make this exercise slightly different. The area of landing has also been increased. And more significantly, this is going to land in the southern uh, polar area, south polar area, which is relatively a virgin area as far as uh, the explorations are concerned, even by the other countries. So, which means that the, get, the, the inputs that would be gathered by Chandrayaan-3 would be of great utility even to the other countries. Uh, Give our viewers a sense, Dr. Jitender Singh, of the kind of scientific takeaways from this mission, because it's not just the act of getting the rover to the moon and the soft landing, but there's a lot of serious science and research involved. Give our viewers a full sense of what do you hope Chandrayaan-3 will tell us and teach us about the moon? Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm glad you asked that. Rahul, the, the, the Chandrayaan series in itself has kept, has, has placed India apart from other countries. Even though uh, uh, we, we may have landed uh, we, 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 even the other, some of the other countries had uh, landed on the surface of the moon much before us. But it was Chandrayaan-1 which brought the evidence of the presence of water on the surface of the moon. So that itself was a breakthrough, huge breakthrough for, for all the other uh, nations which were already into it, whether that be the USA or the then USSR. Because the presence of water indicates the possibility of a human habitat happening uh, sometime later in the future because H2O uh, component, oxygen component of that. And this time, this is going to be an extension of that experiment on the one hand because the, the south polar area has uh, varied uh, craters over there, craters which contain water. Because earlier on, Chandrayaan 1 picked up uh, evidence of H2O molecules, water molecules. Now we hope that this area which has been selected for landing would have more uh, quantitatively more amount of water to experiment with, to gather inputs with. At the same time, there will be in situ experiments as well on the, on the surrounding surface of the moon. And the, the, the possibility of uh, human habitat uh, being viable or not uh, could be, I think, explored to the next level from where it was earlier. And that also makes each other a series different from other countries because they were not into this. And, and that's why I said the, the inputs which are expected from this mission are being very eagerly awaited even by the USA and the other countries which are already into it. As Minister, what's your next priority? Of course, 23rd, 24th August, very important days in terms of the landing and many phases between now and then. But what's the next big idea? What's the next thing that's got you and our scientists at ISRO really excited? Yeah, actually, in a, in a mission like this now, since I've been associated for a number of years, each day is significant because uh, in, in the common parlance, what goes out is the milestone uh, event or the milestone uh, destination, like, for example, the landing of it. But in between, in the course of this journey of 42 days, there are a number of other, you know, uh, uh, sensitive uh, occasions which have to be very carefully followed up, attended to, like, for example, uh, today it has gone out of the orbit of the earth now the now what we would now look for is how it how how smoothly it enters into the orbit of the moon so for from the, from the team which is following it or working on it i think a uh, number of uh, other destinations happen before the final destination of landing happens which of course is 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 the ultimate okay you've had a long and rough ride all the way back we Literally requested you to sit down the moment you came back to Chennai, sir. I won't hold you back any longer. Congratulations on a successful launch and as you said, there's a prayer on every lip. As we look forward to 23rd, 24th August, everybody will be anxious before that. But God willing, Sare Jaha Se Acha and the lunar probe will land successfully.
थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू गॉड ब्लेस यू थैंक यू